All right. Hey, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, we missed last week because it was Thanksgiving, so I hope everyone had great holidays. Uh, but we're back this week. We're joined again by Jesse Stravelli. How are you doing, Jesse? I'm doing well. How are you? Great. Um, we're all excited here. We have a holiday party tomorrow. Uh, but before we get uh, there, we are going to be talking today about automations around databases. Um, and Jesse was filling me in about the various use cases and the flexibility with this one. I'm really excited about it. Uh, but first, um, give us a little background, Jesse, on you know some of the work you used to do and what led you to even explore solving this problem that we're going to discuss today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in a previous role, I was actually working as a database engineer um, and just found a lot of different use cases with data. I mean, obviously databases are known for storage and there's a lot of flexibility on how you can display data. Um, and I think the root of it comes from databases. So when I joined Tynes, I had a really big interest in understanding how Tynes could connect to databases um, for the exact reason of like leveraging data, good data storage. Um, and, you know, I just kept going through the process and realized that there's actually a lot of value in times and variety of different databases that um, the platform can speak to. So, yeah, very cool. Well, let's um, we'll jump right into it. And as you're pulling that up, um, what are like just laying out the kind of key problems that this automation solves for overall? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a lot of times. So before I jump into it, I'm just going to say a lot of times um, when people are doing some sort of enrichment process, they may have some internal federated data um, that's not out on the internet. Um, and oftentimes they come from databases. So we want to be able to provide solutions where people can actually get some of that data and provide that further enrichment on whether it's a security alert or just any sort of triage alert that's coming in. Um, just having access to the data, you know, provides a lot of benefit. Cool. Um and how might somebody like, so you mentioned the previous work, but how might you do it today if you're not using Tynes? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it can get kind of complicated in the sense where you may have to start, install some sort of or ODBC connectors um, and then start writing it out in code. Um, you know, some people use like a, like a management tool, like SQL Management Studio. Um, you know, I think some of the use cases around that, I mean, they, although they have really good displays, um, they take up a lot of memory on your computer. Um, so there are a lot of challenges to connecting within databases today. Um, but I think with times you'll see that there can be a pretty seamless process with it. So cool. Yeah, let's take a look. Absolutely. Cool. So let me just share. Awesome. So the first example we're looking at here um, is actually has to do with Amazon's RDS. Um, so when I first joined in the company, uh, I found that there was something called the, a serverless data, data API, which enables times to be able to use REST APIs and talk to a relational model within Amazon. Um, so when I first built out this story over here, uh, I came out with some you know basic usage templates, which you'll be able to find in our public action templates, which I'll go over in a second, um, where I just gave you basic structure, like creating tables, um, being able to delete records from tables, drop like deleting tables in general. And then the, obviously the biggest piece is retrieving information uh, through select statements. So as we can see in here, I just have a raw select statement, right? So like select from a certain table name um, and just get some information. So all of these core functions right here make up a lot of the majority of what people are trying to accomplish when they see alerts and they're trying to get enrichment. Um, so these can be provided in our public action templates over here on the left-hand side. Um, a more specific example, once I started building these out, was actually using the beautiful pages within Tynes. So for those who don't know about pages, uh, pages are a cool way to display um, like users' input. So I like these front-end displays because in an example like this, um, if I visit this page, I can run one of those select statements like I had on our event transform, and I can click submit, right? And then what's happening in the background is it's doing a select from our actual database, and then we can render the display on a next, on our next page. So it retrieved the information from the database. And then we have these really cool features in times called charts. So now I can look at specific parts of the database uh, logic, and I can start graphing it so people can get a good visual representation. Very cool. So that's one aspect to it. The other one, of course, is then inserting data into the database as well. So what we've done here is if I go to this page, 
um, what we would have is uploading a like a sample CSV file, and then I can specify the table name. So just going back to the story, if I were to go through it, what's happening is it's going to do some sort of logic to insert to make to translate into an insert statement. So it does all the heavy lifting for you, mm -hmm. and then even further, it can check, you know, is the does the table actually exist? So you can see here if the table does not exist, render this display, and then create the table and try to proceed to insert the data in there, and and let the user know that it's been successful. So what may be a like, I don't know, more real life example in like a security team that like just looking at the data flow and as it's going through this story, um, what what's an example of like something that may happen today, an incident or a action where it hits the security team and then you could see this story helping enable that? Right. Yeah, it's a good question. So I think a lot of times I like this example because um, structured databases, relational models force you to have specific criteria within the data form. So if an alert comes in and it's missing some information that maybe another team needs, this is an example where this meets in the middle and then requires that person to get that information in there so we can have this shared relationship um, and have everything all together. So cool. yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Cool. So the next example I want to show you guys is something to do with MongoDB. Now, before I just showed you a relational model, now I'm going to show you an example of a, a non-relational model and what the benefits are to this. So as we can see in the story right here, we have two different sides. Um, we have one that is just using Wiz. So these can be an arbitrary amount of alerts coming in from Wiz, right? And it iterates the findings. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't matter how the data looks. It's just going to insert it into the database. So in this example here, I'm just specifying the data, like the data source, the database, and then whatever, what they call the example of like tables, we call them documents in Mongo, um, can be any sort of unstructured JSON. So I can insert um, maybe like through Wiz right here, and then it has different structure than any sample CSV file that I want to upload um, over into a record right here. So I was just going to say, I think the um, benefit of using this is that if you're unsure uh, maybe of, you know, what you're trying to use, like what kind of data you, you just know that like there's certain data coming in and you want to be able to collect on it. Um, this is where a good example of like Mongo would be used. And then of course, I also like just like the other story that we showed before, um, I have the ability to find records and then I can also delete records the same way that I was doing with uh, this over here. Uh, one other thing I did wanna mention as well, uh, we were showing this Postgres story over here and I actually have a way to connect into one of the RDS models. We have an integrations page um, that's public that you can look for. I mean, it, it takes you step-by-step step on exactly how to create the database and how to connect to it. Uh, just making it a seamless integration if you ever wanted to use it. Yeah, this is great. We'll post the, the link to this along with the video. Yep, absolutely. Cool. Uh, two other examples that I wanted to shout out. So we have our story library as well. Um, and our story library, of course, has many different use cases. Uh, sometimes, you know, people, you know, are thinking security. But if you can search in here, I mean, I looked at an example right here called in Snowflake. Um, and we actually have a few different examples where you can use Snowflake and you can use unstructured data. Um, they have a pretty good REST API endpoint as well that we support. So just wanted to give a quick shout out to some of their examples. And then we also have another one that works just like in the Postgres and Amazon. We also can work with DynamoDB. Um, in this example here, you can see you're just receiving alerts. You're listing all the different tables. And then you can just you know be very robust with how you want to search in Dynamo if you want to insert certain records. Um, this is a more dynamic uh, way that I think would display like how people would triage and then insert data into a database. So feel free to take a look at this as well. Yeah, this is great. We got like, we got a, we got a four for one on this one between <laughs> Dynamo, Snowflake, AWS, Mongo. So it's just, it's cool. You're showing off the, I guess, flexibility of the platform. It's, you know, we're agnostic to the database itself. Um, mm -hmm. Got a whole bunch of e examples here. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I think that's the biggest benefit at times. I mean, the flexibility, like you mentioned, uh, just basically showing like how we can insert into different databases um, and we're, we're expanding on it as well. I, I think, you know, within the next year, I'd like to be able to target all the, most of the databases and the most common ones out there. So more to say.
Awesome. Well, thank you for running us through these. Um, bunch of links here. So I'll be sure we include these examples. You can bring them into your tent and start playing around. And as Jesse mentioned, he has experience doing this without tines, now with tines. So if you have questions, uh, ping him and he can help, um, you know, tailor. I'm sure this is something that looks quite unique to each individual organization. So you probably have to get into the the details, uh, you know, within within whatever systems uh, um, an org has to make these run. So Jesse can help you do that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, thank you. Happy Friday. You yeah, happy Friday. <laughs>